Hello and happy Monday and welcome to week four of Lunch with Lisa. I actually can't believe it is the fourth week that we have been doing this and we, as you know, have had amazing guests and we have another great lineup this week. So thank you for joining us on your lunch break, 1215 to 1240 every day, Monday through Friday. And today I'm thrilled to introduce my friend and CEO of L'Esprit Academy, Stacy Wells. And as you all know, um, time has gone by and we have not been able to go to our stylist and get our hair cut or color our hair or do well, really any of that right now, right? I mean, we all know that those roots are oops, they're right there. They're starting to come in. And so one of the things that Stacey and I were talking about this weekend was what should you be doing and what shouldn't you be doing and why or why not? And just real quick though, before we jump into that, I have to always say um, we have our daily poll as usual, um, the how are you managing work from home? And this has been really fascinating over the weeks to watch how people have been answering this question. I love it. I hope I can work from home forever. It's working pretty well for now, or I can't wait to get back to the office. And um, please respond to that. And we'll let you know what that looks like later in the chat. So Stacy, oh, you've got even some of your students are on yeah. live today. So Stacy, welcome. Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm, I'm so delighted to be here, and it's been great to watch as you've grown through the years. So oh, see, see, see. now that we're on this podcast, how, how wonderful. Yeah, ben. Can you hear me? Stacey, are you lagging or is that quick lag? Are we good now? I think we're no. good. Sorry, you're I, back? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, good. All right. I was just showing you freezing for one second. So this is great. It looks like you have a lot of your students that have logged on today. And one of the things that yeah. we've been recently working with you on is the, uh, the announcement of your school going online. And so you have a school, and if you just said this a minute ago, you froze, so my apologies, but you have uh, schools out in greater Detroit area, Michigan area, and you teach cosmetology. And actually, why don't you give us a little bit, you can probably say it better than I can, but we've been talking about how you've taken the whole school online to online learning. Right. We have cosmetology schools outside of Detroit, one in Royal Oak and, and one in Canton. And we have a student population of about 200. And I was really fortunate because I work with some peers around the country who own cosmetology schools as well. And one of my peers back in Seattle had really sounded the alarm early on on this COVID. So we started really putting our plan in place, not just a few weeks ahead of time, but it had really been um, a solid month ahead of time, plus the technology we had been working on for mm -hmm. about a year and a half. And we just weren't quite ready to move to that technology that includes video chatting and, and live streaming our education. But because of COVID, we were allowed to, through our accrediting agency and the Department of Ed, we were allowed to pivot to that. And we have pivoted in such a wonderful way. Mm -hmm. our, our education team has been nothing short of phenomenal. And our students have not just embraced it, but they have really uh, grabbed on and taking it to the next level with a really inspired education. And it's so what we need right now with mm -hmm. everybody being at home, but it's to, to be inspired, to be stimulated, to be creative, also to have a community around you who is going through the same exact thing that you're going through. So it's a support community for health and wellness, which I'm huge on. Um, right. I work with my education team, for example, when it's really dreary out and rainy and everybody wants to stay in bed, I said, let's adjust the curriculum to work with that. Maybe right. today is more of a day where you're watching videos. Um, and so that's where it's allowed so much more flexibility for us that I'm really excited for the next steps in cosmetology education. Uh, we're a hands-on business, hair, skin, and nails. We need that hands-on element for sure. However, there's so much that we can do through this platform that can still be fun and very, very effective. And my education team is crushing it. And I'm so proud of my students. So it's, it's going quite well. I was actually thrilled. You were just recently featured in Modern Salon. And they were actually recognizing your 
uh, your leadership and shifting to pivoting online. And, and what does that mean for people too? And I didn't think about this until you really explained it. So many people have wanted to go to school, your, your trade school, and have wanted to go to school and couldn't because of childcare or different things that are happening. And now this is new. You weren't able to be online before. And so while you're not sure how long this will last, the reality is I don't think that online is going away now. And so while accreditations might change a little bit, right? Um, right. This is a real opportunity for people, and especially with layoffs and other things that might be happening, there might be people who say, I've always wanted to be able to do this, or I want to try my my creativity, and they could actually sign up through your school, right, and take classes, and even if it's a different state, different, mm -hmm. um, different programs transfer, is that right? It's true. Every state's a little different, but yes, indeed, they can, and the one of the best uh, elements of this distance education is it removes some of the barriers to enrollment that you just right. talked about. Childcare barriers, transportation mm -hmm. issues. Um, now we're seeing a, a slight shift where people are laid off and now instead of attending at night, they can now attend during the day. And right. so it's a shifting uh, model for us in a shifting society and mm -hmm. we're responding in a big way. And I just think Personally, it's going to open so many more doors to this industry that I love so much, has been so good to me and my community and my family. But beyond that, we are all recognizing right now how much we need beauty in our lives because we're talking about our regrowth and our You have no regrowth, I'm noticing there, but you might have some uh, special stuff at home, right? Yeah, I have a few tricks up my sleeve here, but it's true. I think it what it really underscores is the need for professionals um, but in the meantime, how do we how do we handle that at home? Um, and I think it's going to give a lot of people an opportunity on their own to decide, mm, maybe I want to do this as a career. This has been right. really a fun time for me. We've had so many students who enroll in our school that said, my parents made me go to college or I went to college and I got my bachelor's degree, but now I want to open a salon. So I really want to be a professional behind the chair or an right. esthetician. So so that is what is brilliant about uh, the trade. It really like, is. Interestingly, there has been a lot of talk about restaurants and, and rightfully so. I mean, it's just crushed that industry. But the same for the beauty industry. You were saying, how large is the beauty industry as a whole? It's, it's like. It's ginormous. Is that <laughs> an actual number? <laughs> and growing every day. I right. Mean, I, it's I'm one not of the largest industries in the country, right? The beauty industry. It is. It really is. And Dermalogica, who is our skincare partner, and we've partnered mm -hmm. with them since we opened in 04, they, uh, they get more women in business. Skincare gets more women in business globally than any other industry. And wow. I think that's a very powerful statement. Um, we are female dominated industry. However, it's open to everyone and um, it allows so many people to succeed. And the reason I think it is so um, such a wonderful, flexible career it, and how powerful it is, is because of the ever changing needs of society. Um, right. We're all aging. We all decide mm, now I want bangs. Now I don't. I want my hair right. short. There's not just one one element that we're stuck on. We're all constantly evolving. And that allows for uh, people to really explore that mm -hmm. and to also have a changing career with their own personal changing needs, sure. having a family, going through divorce, changing a career. So well, I can't sing the praises enough about beauty. The interesting thing about that too, and I think we've all done it, with major changes comes major changes to our looks, right? Sometimes we go shorter, we go longer, we go to this, we go to that. And now that we're all remote, how do we start to manage that? And you know, this this 25 minutes goes real fast. I think we're going to start to fly through some things. But, you know, conversations that we've had obviously are around our roots. And do we touch up? Do we not touch up? Another one that I stole. I wonder if my daughter's watching today or not. If she's not, oh. I stole this out of her room. Do you know that this is a big thing right now with the board? Uh. They are. Yeah. They want to color their hair a different it color. Makes me sad. Right. And and she's like, but it's it's semi-permanent. It'll come out. Stacey. Well, here we are. So I, I did have some tips that I do recommend. We all have that need, right? We're, mm -hmm. you know, week one and two of quarantine. I think people are like, I got this. This is going to be OK. And right. then reality sets in. And uh, certainly 
teenage minds really need that stimulation and creativity. They're seeing their TikTok feeds and their Instagram feeds and what everybody's doing. And so there's definitely a temptation. My number one suggestion for doing your hair at home is don't. That's the number one suggestion. Because in reality, the cost of, of doing your hair at home versus going to a, to a professional in the appropriate lighting and the appropriate format with the appropriate sanitation. Right. Um, it costs about five times as much and, and lasts about a year to undo something bad that's done at home. So right. that's my number one. So, Especially if you've been going to a salon, because absolutely. I know for me, we have a base and I think Danielle's watching Danielle at mm -hmm. Noli Salon in Sudbury, Massachusetts is my stylist and I love her and forever she's been hearing, but Stacy said, but Stacy said, so here we are together. Um, but you know, she does a base and she does a highlight and she does a keratin and that's a lot of different chemicals. Those are all different chemicals. I don't want to touch doing this myself. How on earth am I going to match that? Right. And what if I damage the root and then we're starting from scratch with all of this hair? Absolutely. I don't want to have to do that. So what, what the typical, um, Kind of not, I wouldn't say a lie, but what we like to believe when we see the commercials for, you know, that gorgeous at home color and they're, you know, flopping it around. It looks shiny and gorgeous. I think people see the color on the box and they've seen the ad or they've seen their Instagram ad that, that it, oh, it's so easy. It's at home and they'll match my color. What, what's not part mm -hmm. of that calculation is the chemistry of hair. And that's probably right. the unsexy part. People just want the final result. You know, people want to go from right. dark level two hair, which is like black, black, black to platinum blonde. And then they want a little pink on the ends. And in reality, there's so much to the chemistry of getting someone there. It's time and chemistry. And there's a lot involved. With that pink yes. on the end? With that's that. a lot of work to get to pink on the ends, isn't it? It's a lot of work. So you have to, in order to get to that, you can't just go over dark hair. You have to go over pre-lightened hair. And how do you get to pre-lightened hair? You have to use a lightener. How do you do that? Well, it takes a lot of work. And typically what happens is the at-home person, the unlicensed professional, applies too much. They leave it on either too long or not long enough. They overlap. So you get breakage. There's so many elements involved, including the minerals in your hair from the water. Right. Um, are you are you properly prepping your hair before you color it? So that's what we assess when we're that's when a you're super in super good in point the hair. Susie, because they always demineralize my hair. And I think I would have forgotten that had you not mentioned about mm -hmm. the minerals. They always do a demineralization to get the minerals out because in my town there's heavy minerals. You know, um it changes that we've the color got here. what about um, a root people are asking about a root powder. What do you think of that? Yeah, there's lots of products out there, which is, I think, great because it's so low risk and it may just dry your hair out a little. You may have like it may feel a little scratchy, but I think honestly, that would be really my next uh, step would be to go to a root powder. One of the biggest things you can do, especially if you are you are somebody that's like a little bit lighter blonde or or maybe a light brown hair and you've got some gray coming in like me. Um, you can just do a zigzag part. And right. by just doing a zigzag part, you can it, you can really hide a lot in that. And, right. and that may buy you a little time as well. Um, so really important to not take permanent steps that can cause you really like a year. I'm talking a year or a chemical haircut. And if you've never right. seen a chemical haircut, it is not good. I've done it on my own hair thinking I could break the rules. And I remember going to blow it out. And I had that much hair left. So I had this nice chemical layering in here because yes, I, I overlapped the, the lightener far too often. And so right. um, I was able to work around it and get a great haircut. Um, but at home, those are the things that you can really not just damage your hair, but you can actually injure yourself. Things can happen uh, very quickly with chemicals and um, and it, it can burn. You can have bad reactions. So it's really best, as I say, don't go it alone. And if you have to start with a root powder and then maybe go to a semi-permanent color. But to get somebody's hair pink like your daughter, right. um, she would have to lighten it and then deposit now the right. depositing of the color isn't bad because it's semi-permanent it'll wash out you know very quickly it's the lightening process that's the problem so, so what, what about for people that need to cover those grays or they're concerned about the grays and what 
you brought up to me yesterday because I was, you know, for anyone who knows me, my parents are always perfect. Like, yeah, they are. And they, um, for over a decade, have had either dip or gel on them. And mm -hmm. now there's nothing because you said to me, why don't you give your nails a rest? Why don't you give your hairs a rest? Right. And I thought about it and I left them naked and they're yep. very weak and thin because they've been having product on them forever. But I thought about it like I'm not going to be home for that much longer in the grand scheme of things. And maybe it is a good time to give my fingers a rest on that polish. And you take a solution with hair that, you know, we all are dying to color it, but maybe just giving it a, a, a rest. Take right a step now. back. Yeah. Put everything down. So one of the things I have, I've done that as well. I have my natural nails right now. I have been putting lotion on my hands about a zillion times a day because mm -hmm. we are doing that hand sanitizer. So I've been using a scrub and mm -hmm. lotion on my hands every day. And then you can also use oils on your nails to kind of bring them back. Right. And certainly with our nutrition, it, it'll help bring those nails back. But I'm giving my nails a break. I've given my skin a break where I um, haven't worn much makeup in a while, but I've also done things like I've, you know how I'm, I'm sure Lisa, you're never in a rush. And just like yeah. I never am, I have these long luxurious mornings of taking my time. But honestly, I try to smash everything in like a one-step process for my face right. where right. I make my exfoliant with my cleanser and I'm rushing and I'm rushing out of the house. Now I've got a little bit more time. So I'm taking and including it into my self-care routine where I'm actually taking the time, going step by step, not skipping the, the steps, using the products maybe I've ignored a little bit, mm -hmm. and then doing the at-home masks, doing the things right. that, and it feels amazing. Like there's, I brought some props because yeah. there's some amazing things out there that will help you through this. Anything that's, with lavender in that's it. That's great because we have someone asking about home yeah. masking and conditioning masking and mayonnaise. So mayonnaise is great. And the reason it's great is it has protein in it. So when people okay. have had uh, chemical work done on their hair, it can, it can damage and it breaks up the protein bonds in your hair. So putting some protein back is really important, but it also has moisturizing uh, elements to it. So there's always two things you want to do with a mask uh, when it comes to hair. It's protein and moisture. So people right. who have dehydrated hair where maybe it's just from the environment, maybe they don't get right. enough water in their diet. Um, to go for a moisture mask um, and anything yeah. with some natural oils in that is great. Um, so, and so for what others, are your here? Were you going to show us some? Yeah. And in fact, you know what? One of the things I do, and I don't do it with this one. This is a uh, sterling silver mask from AG. Wella has some amazing products. There's so many great products, but I highly recommend professional ones because they're oh. not filled with salt and fillers. Stacey, that goes to another question someone had about natural coloring products or natural Product. Yep. Another thing I learned from you, there is a big difference from the commercial ones and the salon ones. And we all think that that's just them upselling, but it's not the amount of salt in different things and different artificial things Absolutely. that are in it. It's so you your hair. It with salt because it's a thickener and it's a cheap thickener. So you get this massive thing of shampoo that smells really great, but salt, as we know, we can feel it on our skin. Um, it, it dehydrates. So the manufacturers put in a bunch of silicones to make that hair feel glossy. And what ends up happening is with repeated use, like the first few times people are like, oh my gosh, it repaired my hair. Well, what it did was it coated the hair. And so it, it dehydrated it and then deposited these silicones on it. And then what happens is in, in, you know, a week or two, their hair starts getting limp. It starts really building up. So again, right. this is, this is a conversation, you know, really working with your stylist and having a dialogue, looking at the condition of your hair, making sure that you're clarifying it and demineralizing it and getting that hair prepped for the appropriate products, whether it's chemicals, whether it's just styling products. Right. I've been using the only thing I've been using in my hair, to be honest, I've been shampooing just a few times a week. Mm -hmm. I leave the mask on overnight. And what mask was, again? Because people are asking. I've been mask? using the AG Sterling Silver one because of my light hair. And it just takes keeps that from getting um, yellowing. Um, right. And the reason is yellowing happens just environmentally. Again, right. our, we, we attract metals. So um, that's super important. But I've been using the AG Repair Serum. So I just put that anything with like um, kind of healing properties. This has keratin in it. There's a lot of Wella products and Sebastian products out there. And so what I do is when my hair is damp, I put it through and then sleep on it or right. just put it through in the morning after I've rinsed out that mask 
wet or dry and mm -hmm. it keeps it. I have kind of naturally wavy hair. So I've just been letting it go and, yep. and have had no heat. And this is something we've talked about a lot, Lisa, is that, you know, there's two things that can damage your hair in a big way. The chemicals not being used appropriately and understanding the science behind it and right. overheating hair. I have fine, which means I have like skinny, that's the only thing skinny on me, skinny dining amateur hair, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it. I should not, and it's and it's also chemically processed, be using high heat on my uh, on my blow dryer. There's right. blow dryers, there's multiple buttons here, and there's a low and a high, and there's usually a, a low, medium, and high. So I put it on medium only. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm in a rush, I'm so tempted to just blast it with a ton of heat but it's going to break your hair. So I've been I never giving that. hair a break from the blow dryer and mm -hmm. the irons and just, and, and I've noticed a difference. I definitely feel like my hair is saying, thank you. Yeah. You're not beating me up so much. We get a lot of questions coming in with okay. five minutes to go. Is there a mask that's good for natural gray hair? Um, again, natural gray hair has a tendency to yellow. So I would use anything with a purple base. Purple, if you think of your color wheel back from kindergarten, purple will be is a um, it will is a complementary color. So it'll neutralize any yellows. Okay, a lot of the um, styling salons are doing pickup and delivery of products too. Mm -hmm. So check with your stylist. Absolutely, if they are open right now. Right. Um, you always say don't order from Amazon. You don't know what you're getting from Amazon, but if you can support your local stylist, you Absolutely. always remind me of that. Right. Yes. Yeah, for your local stylist, because they're going to be in a situation where they're they're going to need to get back to work. And I don't know what it's going to look like in the future, but realize that their professional credentials go beyond the chemistry of your hair. It's really taking care of the client in so many ways beyond beauty. It's sanitation. It's understanding um, that if you've ever seen the, the blue liquid sitting on the styling chair, that's mm -hmm. barbicide that kills viruses. So right. it, it kills everything. So it's so important. Your stylist is trained in that to keep you safe. Right. And um, it may not sound sexy, but it really is. And making sure the lighting's good and you're getting exact match color and not trying to do it on your own. Right. The other, so again, I know somebody asked about gray hair mask. If you want to deposit color on your hair for gray, there are masks available that like are for brown, you know, brown hair, brunettes. Or dark. So, but just be careful not to sleep with those um, because they make it on your pillow. Right. Because they um, do have guys in it. Also, again, so again, this is not a long period of time. Way better to just let your hair rest and really do the right conditioning and the right mm -hmm. stuff for it and take that time to do it. And we're all in the same boat. So, not to worry about it. Um, Now's the time to experiment, not what? with kitchen scissors, though. Okay. So, so, so these are, these are really great. Uh, $21 Fiskars that I have in my kitchen. So these, my dear, are $600 shears that every student, cosmetology student at our school, these are Hattori Hanzo. Um, they get different brands. Uh, and what's the see. difference? What could really be the difference between those and these? And why can I not cut my hair with these? So those probably are coated with some sort of um, coating so that when you cut wire with it or floral tape or something, it's can, you can pull it off. These are Japanese steel and they're designed not to push the hair. So what happens is the at-home stylist is going to try to jam as much hair into that and just chop it. Well, what that does is it pushes the hair and then it cuts on an angle and somebody says, well, I just cut straight across, but it ends up going up like that. Right. It's a little bit more complicated. People take w way too big a sections and then they wonder why it's not quite right. There is an at-home hack you can do, and this is the only thing, and I can't believe I'm actually saying it and being recorded saying this, but if you're brave and if you feel confident and you don't have frisker scissors at home like that, but have something a little bit more like this, at least a little bit better, take a small amount if you wanted to, to cut your fringe. Always start long. You can take more off. People want I always to start super long, especially yeah. if it's wet. It's so funny because people think, well, I want my fringe, you know, here to hit my eyebrows. So I'll just hit it there. Well, hair shrinks when it's definitely from wet to dry. So I always recommend cutting dry and you can pull them down and just take a section of how much fringe you want. A little bit. You can always cut more. Always can cut more. The deeper you go back here, the more editorial look it'll be. So um, the less will be a yeah, little bit more. Those sound like good words we don't want to do at home. I'm yeah, not, I'm editorial, not doing editorial cuts. Yeah, runway work and so forth. 
So you take a V and then you would take the hair and you twist it right in front of you. So it looks twisted just like this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, figure out where you want it to, to land and take it a little longer. Again, giving yourself some freedom and then just cut across. Yeah. Only under the most desperate of circumstances would I ever recommend it. <laughs> so, but here's the great thing about fringe and bangs. They grow back. You can clip right. them back. You can try, you know, be brave and try new styles with a braid or something that you're not uh, comfortable going out in public with. This yeah. is the time to try it. Give your hair a break, you know, get some creativity and have fun with it. I, right. it, it it's not about, about it. perfect and looking great on Instagram, but right. trying is using things like Coconut oil at home is great, especially on those ends where they get kind of fried feeling. It mm -hmm. can use it to piece out. Just remember, you can always add more. A lot of things that have natural product in it, you want to warm them up. So something like this, you want to really like coconut oil, warm it up in your hands because that's what's going to activate it. Any beeswax, that's what's going to activate it. So, um, yeah, use those sort of things. Stay away from, you know, give your hair a break with the, the heat. Don't forget about the men. I know a lot of guys are growing beards out. Yeah. Well, if they've stopped shaving, they may end up finding that they're having some breakouts under their skin because shaving is a nat natural, well, it's a mechanical exfoliant every day that guys do. Mm -hmm. So, and, and lots of men, I'm not saying everybody, but lots of men don't really scrub their face. So right. um, that, that shaving action is what keeps their face clean. So um, encourage them to really get in there with a facial cleanser and even using something like a beard balm. Right. And to keep it. Um, Whose brand is that? This is American Crew. You love American and Crew. Great fragrance, all natural. It's got a lot of great properties in it that are naturally yeah. antibacterial. Um, so you've got things like clove in it. Uh, but you do that and, and don't um, just think because you're growing it out, you can neglect it. You may start feeling, if it feels itchy under there, it may be because you need to exfoliate. So you can do it with your fingers. You know, we really try to keep this um, tight 25 minutes and we're all already a little bit over. For those okay. of you who have not done the poll, if you could do the poll, Stacey, I've been telling you for years, you should be doing a YouTube show. And <laughs> I'm going to say it right now with your team listening because um, you're you're so fabulous. Um, real quick, and I know we're a little bit over, but salons of the future, what are we looking at? I think we're looking at a, a whole new world in a sense. I think what we've really seen is evidenced by this discussion is the need for the beauty professional. Yeah. Uh, there's so much that goes into it. There's so many questions that can be answered by your beauty professional. I think what I see for the future is really um, an increased relationship with that professional and not just going out on your own thinking, well, I'll try this and I saw this blog or that blog. It's really forming that relationship with your trusted skincare professional or nail or hair professional. That's really important. I think there's going to be a lot of, um, there's going to be levels that we're going to go back to. Fortunately, right. we have been a regulated business for a long time and I have really appreciated that. And so have the clients and the regulation isn't based on how great we do highlights or how great we give a facial. It's based on how we protect the public and we protect them by knowing what we're putting on their hair keeping them safe, not damaging their their bodies, and also having great sanitation. And right. that is the need. So we, that will continue. And we may be wearing masks. We may have a little bit more social distancing. Um, but the one thing I know and I'm very proud of in the beauty profession is we've been keeping people safe for many, many years. Um, so, so know that. Yeah. And that's an important piece of that. When you're doing things yourself and you're cutting things important. yourself and you're trimming things yourself, that sanitation. Mm -hmm. And and one of the things you've said is we may not be able to have as many people in a room at a time. So that might be something we're looking at. You're also mentioning with my dip, I may need to. You broke up a little. I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me, but yeah, if for the nail dip, um, it's now not legal in Michigan to get put in directly into the pot. So buy your own product, talk to your nail professional about bringing your own product and uh, or using the kind that they can actually sprinkle on. Can you hear me? Oh, she's frozen, but you can hear me. So what she was asking about the dip nails. So if you if you go and get your nails uh, dipped, 
it's hard to sanitize powder with people putting their, even though their hands are sanitized, they're repeating and putting it in. I've never been a fan of that. Um, so unless something is sanitizable, um, which all of our files are sanitizable, um, and I would really stay away from going to any salon that requires you to dip into their own powder. Talk to them about um, purchasing your own or using other application methods or going to, you know, again, right now, this is going to give you time to think if you want to go natural. Um, again, I really, really, I know it's not a sexy thing to talk about is sanitation. And it's such an important piece of what we do. And um, so it's really important that you have that conversation with your stylist when you return and, and uh, your stylist will let you know what they do in their salon each and every day to protect you. Um, what lashes do I use? Um, these are, I don't remember. I did just pop some on. This has been the first time in a long time I've had them on. Um, let me see what other, my makeup and skin look amazing. Thank you. Dermalogica is wonderful. I've been using, um, the sound sleep cocoon at night. And what that is, is I do my routine where I cleanse, I exfoliate with my favorite exfoliant. It's called the multivitamin thermofoliant from Dermalogica. And it feels like after you use it, like you've had a facial and it leaves you glowing. And then I put on my, I have a bio serum that I use from Dermalogica as well. And then you put this sleep cocoon over it. And what that does is it kind of locks in everything for the night. As we know, when we sleep, we have cellular turnover and, um, it, it's a great time for all these products to be affected. This also has lavender in it. So it has a natural relaxing property to help you get to sleep. And I know some people are having sleeping issues right now during quarantine. Let me see if there's any other issues if people are still on that I can answer. Um, I think Lisa's still off. I think I got to, yeah, coconut oil at home, leave it on your hair. You can sleep with it. Um, but don't overdo it. And you may want to mix it with something else so that it's not, you don't feel like your hair is greasy, but um, I would definitely recommend just trying it. Now's the time to do it and see how your hair responds. Um, color treated hair definitely needs really good product. And again, no Amazon. The reason I say no Amazon until they have their portal where you can order um, and know that it's coming from a professional, there's too much room for, um, uh, pirated materials that's huge in the makeup industry. I mean, it's massive, the amount of fraudulent product out there. And so just be careful, really careful. And that's why I always say, go to a professional, know, know your source. It's your skin and your hair and your nails are way too um, vulnerable to be trusting it with somebody that's going to put in really bad chemicals for you. Um, home demineralizing. There's a couple products out there that you can use. A clarifying shampoo, a good clarifying shampoo is great. Malibu um, has some clarifying products that we use behind the chair. Um, <clears throat> and I know they also have some at home products. Uh, uh, Moroccan oil has a beautiful clarifying shampoo. And Moroccan oil has a great reputation for um, high end product and really, really high quality ingredients. So what I recommend with that is clarifying your hair and then thinking about it, you're opening up that hair when you clarify it. your hair strand is like um, scales of a fish. So it opens it up and you can remove uh, bad product from it. Lisa's back. I don't, I still can't hear you. I can't hear you, Lisa. We're just getting static from Lisa. That happened earlier. Um, so what I would recommend is uh, how about eyebrows? Don't, yeah, don't wax them on your own at home. It's really hard to do anything on yourself. 
um, because you're looking at yourself in a mirror. Um, but when somebody else is, is working on you, they've got a better perspective and they see the whole picture. So we can kind of not see the forest through the trees and we start plucking, plucking, plucking and overdoing it. Um, and that tends to happen. So please don't do your eyebrows at home. Um, just let them grow in and then you can reshape them. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, Lisa. Yay. We, you know, again, this is our fourth week and uh, the only day that we've had true technical difficulties on my end. We had some issues getting in today with uh, sound and uh, like I joked, I had said you should have your own show. So I thought I'd just throw you in and let you know. <laughs> um, there you go. Push right there we go. Down. But um, yeah, no, my first system froze there and we were having some challenges and uh, thank you for running with it. We are, we're running way late today. It sounds like you've been answering a lot of good questions for people though. So. Yeah, I've been looking through it and I think I got to everything else. The difference, oh, somebody asked what's the difference for color treated hair. Um, what it does is it helps lock in those di the, the dye molecules into the hair. I was starting to get a little bit geeky with my chemistry that hair looks like scales of a fish and it opens and shuts. And when your hair seems fried, it's because it can't close anymore. Um, and that's what makes it look frizzy. So what you got to think about is what you're putting in it and how you're sealing it up. So um, clarifying shampoos pull things out, um, dyes and um, even direct deposit color shampoos and conditioners fill that back in. So um, that's how they vary. Hair masks are great and a haircut trim. Again, you know, doing it yourself, it's just like your eyebrows. You look, I don't cut my hair at home. I've done it once and, and I even had extensions in and I will, it, instead of, I was cutting it, what I thought was like this and it came out like this. So, I mean, it's one thing to just clip off the, the dead ends. Even then you can end up going a little crazy. One of my, uh, my daughter's friends, moms called me in a panic. She said, I went a little nuts and she was just taking sections. And what ended up happening was, she ended up having three big tears. So I had to give her a whole new haircut. Came out adorable um, in the end and she was ready for the change. But sometimes it happens, it, you get a little, again, you can't see the forest through the trees. You just keep going for it. Um, Stace, we're gonna have to wind this up because okay. I want people to be able to get back to work, but they're asking for you to come back. So it looks like we're gonna have to put you on again in the future. And I'm happy to. I really appreciate that with all the system issues today that uh, I, I'm actually super thankful that you of all people were our guest today and we just continue to roll with it. And uh, yeah, maybe that's a little bit of how, how our lives go too, right? So, so true. So you might have done something like that once or twice before. Um, I wanna thank everybody for coming today. Uh, again. I'm Lisa Nickerson, CEO of Nickerson. We are a public relations and marketing firm in Boston and Miami, but we work as companies actually all over the globe and uh, we're working on projects all over the globe. We're really excited about that. Right now in particular, your message and your marketing are really important and the tone of how you're talking to people really says something about your company. And now what we're really seeing is people starting to revamp their marketing, revamping their collateral, their web. Is it ready to come back into the new economy? Is it saying what it needs to to people right now? And that's where we're here to help. So call us if there's something that we can be helpful to you with. Thank you so much, Stace, for coming on today. You're welcome. My pleasure. And uh, we'll all talk later.